702 San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090. Davey Johnson, former Dodger manager, along with Met manager, won the 86 World Series. One of the great World Series of all time. We'll talk to him, Brian Baldinger, also at 745. We will talk to Danny Gonzalez, the D.C. of the Aztecs. They try to right the ship and really save their season. That'll be at around 710. We'll talk to him and get his thoughts on that. I want to, speaking of college coaching here, um, Jim McElwain, the head football coach at Florida. Uh, he's made a public statement here saying that uh, family and players are getting death threats because they've started the season at 3-3. Three and three. I'm going to defend the death threats. You're going to go, what? How could you do that? Well, I think Tim Tebow handled it perfectly one time. Tim Tebow was – somehow they got a hold of Tim Tebow's uh, cell phone number, and they were giving death threats to his mom – saying all kinds of things about his sister. You know what his comment was? Ah, it's SEC fans. You just have to understand them. They don't really mean that. They're just speaking their passion. And sometimes they go over the cliff and they go overboard, and that's just the way it is. That was that guy's mentality. And by the way, in the South, when you have that kind of mentality and you have that kind of passion for those fans and the way that you have for Alabama football or LSU football, I understand it. Many times they don't, okay? They, you don't look at it for what it is. And Jim McElwain going into Florida, he's not understanding the culture there. Sure, are, are, are those comments over the line? Absolutely. But I understand it. And I, again, maybe I'll back up on the words defending, but I will say I understand it. Look, I had a rant years ago, and I was talking about how my school, the University of Miami, wasn't playing well, and I was talking about sticking guys with knives and kneeing them, gouging their eyes out and stuff. Look, man, that's not verbatim, but for me, what that was is a mentality that the fan base, the players, all of that have when it comes to tremendous passion that those fans have in that region for those football teams. Uh, Is it right? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I get it. I've heard it. I've seen it. I understand it. When you're 3-3 three and three at Florida in the Southeastern Conference and you see what Nick Saban has done and you start saying we're getting death threats, hey, man, that's part of that job in that region. LSU, same thing. You think Les Miles wasn't getting those conversations and he wasn't getting those when they were losing to Alabama? <laughs> Again, I'll back up on the word defending, but I understand it. So, again, he's saying, well, what, my players are getting death. Hey, man, when you're at those schools, you are going to hear that stuff. You are going to have to understand the passion of those fans. Have you ever listened to that guy, Paul Feinbaum Joe, and his show and how those people call that guy and Mm -hmm. their psycho fans in the Southeastern Conference? That comes with expectations in that region. There's a different mentality. And so when a dude comes in from the outside and he goes into the SEC and he's not, he's not built for that stuff and he hears this and he sees it and he takes it verbatim that these people are giving me death threat, that's not really what it is. And again, making sure you understand, is it right to talk like that? Absolutely not. Is it right to threaten a kid or have conversations about threatening coaches? But that's how those folks feel. There was a story a couple of years ago, Joe, that a guy went over and poisoned the Auburn uh, mm. elm tree or something and killed a 100-plus-year-old tree because that he was an Alabama fan and he went on campus there and he did that. And that guy did ser- – he served time, by the way, for that for that crime going on the Auburn campus and doing that. Those fans are nuts down there. You start losing football games – you're going to hear a lot of people making those conversations like that. Let me ask you this question. People call your voicemail and say those things to you. Sure. You act like Tim Tebow. Yes. People call your daughter's voicemail and put that on their daughter's voicemail. How do you react? I react to her telling her, listen, this is just their passion. Don't sweat it. How would you react? Um, I'd be very upset with that, and I would be upset with it, and I would make it understand that I would I would say See, something. I think that's what Jim McElwain is doing. I, I, I get it, Joe, but you also have to go like Tim Tebow said in the past, too. They they called. They said they were going to actually hear. They said they were going to rape his daughter and mom. Mm. Tebow went like this. Hey, it's LSU fans. Right. 
That's I, I how you that. handle it. That's how you handle it. Because fans today, Joe, I mean, look, fanatic fan, you're that close to being insane. Okay? When you say fanatic and fan, you're that close. But to me, it also talks about expectations that you have at those programs. That, hey, 3-3, three and three, that ain't good enough at Florida. I, I, hey, and I get it. Not right. Not right at all to be saying those to kids. But it's the temperature of those areas, man. And I, and I kind of – I've heard it before, and I laugh it off now. I do. I get what you're saying. You say that to my daughter, it's a different conversation. It is. It is. When you're saying it to players – I think you got to rise above that stuff a little bit. I think the players individually are. I think the, the coach is being responsible for his guys. All right. Speaking of being responsible for his guys, the Aztecs, what a game this weekend they have now. They've got to right the ship here, and no doubt about it, the last two weeks have not been good for the Aztecs uh, as a group. And, again, you win games as a group and you lose games as a group. The defensive coordinator of the Aztecs, they get to Hawaii Rainbows this weekend, and he joins us now here on the Corky's Hotline. Good morning to you, Danny. Appreciate you coming aboard, Coach. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. All right, Coach, give me the conversation that you've had with your guys over the last 48 hours on how you prepare for your game this weekend. You know, we, we've uh... – we always address the, the previous game when we get back. So they get Sundays off. A lot of them were here on Sunday on their own, watching the tape, trying to figure out what's going on because they have as, as – I mean, they're hurting as bad as we are. So uh, that, it was good to see a lot of those guys around here. And then Monday we get to meet with our guys and, and we, we go over the mistakes and the, the things that could have changed the game, the outcome um, on Mondays. And then we start start right into the next opponent. And Monday uh, at 4 o'clock, it was all about Hawaii and, and what we got to do to right this ship and get back on the winning ways. Coach, what have you seen over the last two weeks that was troubling to you that maybe you guys have identified? Uh, you know, it's one thing to sit there on a the chalkboard, Coach, but sometimes you got to look your guys in the eye. Uh, it, 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 is it mental? Is it physical? Um, did they get worn out because of all the hype that happened early on in the year? I mean – Give me your perspective on what you've seen over the last two games. Well, I think there's a – it's it's not about scheme. I mean, we're doing um, – we're getting a lot of the same offenses that we've seen over the last six weeks. Um, so, we're, we're, we've are we got guys in the right spots. We're just – I don't know if it's because we're a little bit beat up or, or um, it's uh, a combination of that and those guys are blocking us a little bit better. Uh, we're not getting off blocks and making the same plays we were made earlier. We're not causing turnovers, uh, in my opinion, because we're not coming downhill as fast because we're trying. We're getting in situations where we're trying to do too much. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've been uh, we've been a little spoiled around here with playing with a, with with a lead or a big lead, and we've been behind the last couple of weeks. And I think we have a few of our young guys pressing, trying to do a little bit more. Uh, to make special plays to try and get back into it instead of just staying on schedule. And that's been the big focus this week of, hey, we've got a plan, stick to it, and it'll work. Danny Gonzalez, the defensive coordinator of the Aztecs here on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty Tonight. Coach, sometimes in adversity you find leadership too. Uh, and, hey, it's great to have everything you know, going in one direction and you know everything is kumbaya when everybody's winning and you're undefeated. But sometimes you find out a little bit more about yourselves when you start having a losing streak like this. Have you found out a little bit more about the uh, the football team actually going through these last two weeks? Oh, we definitely have. You you, you definitely find out the guys that are going to step up, the ones that um, try and take charge and, and lead by example and both will speak out. I mean, there comes to a point a, a coach can only do so much as far as leadership and, and getting those guys because we don't get to stand on the field with them on Saturday during where they're playing. I mean, it's all up to them. And there's been a few guys that have, have uh, stepped up the last couple of weeks, uh, more so this week trying to uh, – and there's been a few of the older guys trying to get the younger guys to fall in line and, and get back to who we are. Have you found out a little bit more about your depth on the team too, Coach? Because like you say, you can get beat up, and football's a war of attrition, as you know, Coach. I mean, you, the same football team you see in September – traditionally is not the same football team, and hopefully it's a better football team as you get closer to December. Have you found out a little bit more about your other guys? We found a little bit about a combination of both. We're finding out the, the guys that we expect to play the majority of the snaps, how they're dealing with injury, the ones that are, are overcoming it, and the ones that have not overcome it the way we'd like. And then we've got a few guys that we've worked in the depth that uh, – are starting to show up and make a few more plays. I mean, we've got guys like Dakota Turner, and I, I just want to take my hat off to him. I mean, he's playing with a one 
pretty much healthy ACL. He's got a bad shoulder. And that young man gives better effort, plays harder than, than anybody I've ever been around. Uh, we've got a few of those guys. Um, we just need to, to have those younger guys mature a little bit more and, and keep going. Hawaii, give me a little, little bit of a uh, preview of what you're going to see and what we're going to see this weekend. You know, Hawaii, statistically, uh, they're the second-best offense in our conference behind Colorado State. They're averaging 480 yards a game. They're very balanced. They're 50-50 run to pass. Uh, Drew Brown, who was a freshman quarterback for him last year, uh, is kind of coming into his own. Um, now, they did lose John Ursa, who was their leading receiver, coming into this game la- uh, in their last game against San Jose State. So the, uh, he was about two-thirds of their receiving um, yards coming into our game. So they're, they're going to spread it out a little bit more than what they had been, which might, might make it a little bit tougher. They've got a couple of big receivers that are, are really big. And then their running back, uh, I think he's pretty special. I mean, he, uh, he finds holes. He can make quick holes in the cuts. And uh, they, they do a good job on offense. And we've got quite a challenge coming up. I would say this to you too, Coach, right? This is more about us more than them. I mean – more about us taking care of responsibilities, techniques, lane responsibility, not jumping uh, and running around blocks and stuff like that. Would you agree? Oh, definitely. I mean, we, we, uh, two weeks ago, it was more about us. I mean, we were, we were in, uh, in the game and had opportunities, especially on our side of the ball, had opportunities to, to change the game or give our offense a short field, and we haven't done that. And that's what we've been really good about around here. So it's, it's been uh, it's been talked about. You know, we need to get back to doing what we're doing, and, and the, the big thing is causing turnovers. Now we're not um, we're not we haven't been and people haven't been playing us from behind, so we haven't had as many opportunities as far as them throwing the ball and having the chance to make those kind of plays. So what you do when you get to that point is you've got to make your own special plays, and that means the second and third guy in's got to be the one punching the ball out. So instead of just running over there to hit somebody, run over there with a purpose, run over there with an intent to get that ball out. And then when it's on the ground or, or we have opportunities, if they, when they do throw it, we've got to make those plays so that we can, we can get the momentum changed and get the spark back on our sideline. Danny Gonzalez, the defensive coordinator of the San Diego State Aztecs. They take on the Hawaii Rainbows this weekend here on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. Two last questions for him. I would think, too, Coach, for you guys and the coaching staff itself, it's got to be a challenge because, you know, it's one thing to go in there, and the easiest thing to do is the old school thing to do is to go in there and beat the hell out of your guys. You know, you guys also have to be a little patient also, and there's a balance there, isn't it? You want to make your point, you want to have balance, but I would imagine these last eight quarters have also been a pretty challenging time for the coaching staff. It has, because our, our mentality around here is is uh, is we want to be mean and aggressive, and, and when we get where we consider, uh, when we lose the line of scrimmage, we want to challenge our guys and, and get after them and, and just let them know that ain't acceptable. And it's happened for two weeks now. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you do the same thing over and over and you get the same result, you're getting diminishing returns. So as a coaching staff, we had, uh, we've met about it and talked about it. And, uh, I mean, we got to get our guys back to where they are. It doesn't mean you, you treat them like they're you, – you don't treat them any, in a soft manner, but you have to be a little bit positive and get them going in the right direction. And, and uh, now we're going to coach them hard, as we always have. It's just sometimes you have to change the, the spirit around here and, and – uh, Help them win. Hey, how about this? No Mai Tais this weekend, right, Coach? No Hawaii Mai Tais. It's all about getting a win, right? <laughs> oh, it's all about getting a win. I, mean, I think the way – now, we've done this trip to Hawaii numerous times over the, the 20 years that I've been with Coach Long, and uh, it's, a, it's a business trip. I like the way we do it. We leave Friday afternoon. We get there. We eat dinner. We get up. We go to the stadium, do our walk through normal stuff, play the game, get on the plane, and go home. So, I don't even think our kids uh, – well, nowhere in Hawaii other than the ocean. We fly over on the way to get there. <laughs> Go get them, Coach. Have a great win this weekend. Appreciate you doing this. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for having me on, guys, and go Aztecs.